I'm Joe and this is Sierra Specialty Auto. Welcome back to the shop for part two of the build on the bandsaw welding or soldering fixture. Let's get right back to work. Here's a good example of the kind of pitfalls you can encounter when you're uh, working on the fly as I was here. I had to machine off uh, a little bit of the head of that cap screw to clear the dado feature for the uh, 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 blade registration. I could have uh, moved that cap screw back seven eighths of an inch instead of three quarter inch from the end of the register bar underneath uh, or I could have brought the cap screw in from the bottom uh, either of those uh, methods would have worked. I did manage to get away with this, but uh, I got lucky. Uh, those other four tapped holes are for the later edition of toggle clamps. Uh, I'll show the installation of those in a future video. The next thing we need to do is cut out this bad section of teeth here. I'm going to cut this as close closely as I can. Uh, this is the high side. I think right about there is the last tooth that I had ground on trying to get it back square. This stuff is tough. And on the other side I want to get as close as I can again. I can see Right here, where my nail is, is the uh, the the original joint. There's a gap. The, the teeth did not quite uh, match. The pattern didn't match. And uh, I want to be able to get this back onto the bandsaw when I'm done. So I'm going to cut just as small an amount as as I feel I can get away with. That's about a half an inch. All right. Now I got I got pretty square on that. I'm happy with that. Uh, I don't think I need to touch that up any. Let's uh, go over to the belt sander now and see if we can get the fixture to work. Let's see what sort of a viewing angle this is. I've got my fixture clamped to the uh, sander table. I noticed when Tom was doing his, it seemed like he was having a little trouble uh, keeping up with his fixture. It was moving back and forth. I think maybe clamping it down will help. Uh, my slot is a pretty good fit on here. Uh, I think it's going to hold the blade uh, plenty straight enough for a good result. So let's turn this on. I think that'll work. It's not quite as wide a scarf as I had expected. Uh, I may I may end up wanting to do a shallower angle on there. I'm going to see how this works though. I did see one uh, video where uh, a fella did uh, essentially a butt joint with the uh, silver solder and the appeared to work, but I, I have, would have no faith in that myself. Uh, let's get over to the vise and see if we can actually solder up a joint. After setting this up I can definitely see the advantage of the, the toggle hold down clamps. If I can't uh, find mine, which I, I know I have around somewhere, uh, if I can't find them, I'm going to uh, to buy some some more. Uh, I did uh, one thing uh, to get these tightened up into the fixture that I think would probably be necessary with a hold bound clamp as well. I use a little uh, bit of aluminum to, 
to give a little tap and make sure both sides of that blade are firmly seated into the register groove. Uh, I've got uh, flux between, on top, and on the bottom of this joint. Now we'll try some some uh, some heat and see if we can get a joint uh, get soldered around here, or I should say, uh, uh, silver wire. I did finally get that soldered to run. Uh, this is my first silver solder joint, so I'm sure this gets better with practice. Uh, I think that took. It uh, looks to me like there's a, a good bond. It did finally flow. Uh, so, And then I held the heat uh, fairly close, pulling it away slowly to try to avoid hardening the metal. I'm, I'm hoping by doing that step that it won't be necessary to anneal it. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens when we put it on the machine. So for the moment, let's uh, shut down, let this whole thing cool off uh, till I can touch it, and then we'll get, the, get that joint sanded uh, down uh, so there's not a thick spot to run through the guides. I've moved the blade out a bit uh, in the fixture so I can get good access across that joint. Let's see what happens with this uh, abrasive wheel here. Side looks pretty good. Have to roll it inside out to get to the other side. Since that down again, let's see if we can repeat. I may let it hang off a little bit here. That might work a little easier.
The solder did flow all the way through. I need to practice my technique on the silver soldering, but I believe this worked. Let's go put it on the bandsaw. Well, this blade works a heck of a lot better than it did before. Uh, there's still a little bit of a hiccup when that uh, joint comes by. Uh, I suspect that may be partly due to my uh, uh, untrained soldering technique. I need to work on that, uh, get that down pat. Uh, and I wonder if there uh, may be some kind of stresses left in that blade at the joint location uh, due to uh, the original welding. I may not have cut back quite far enough. Uh, to get out of a heat affected area. But let's uh, take a look and see how it does work. This aluminum would go better with a, either a coarser blade or more speed, but it's still doing fairly well, much better than it did prior to cutting the bad section out. When the blade hesitated at the joint on this cut on the angle iron, it's because the drive belt was slipping. And that's my next project with this saw, is to uh, rearrange the drive belt system. Uh, I, I did a conversion on this saw from metal woodworking to metalworking a few months ago before I started uh, doing YouTube videos and uh, was not happy at the time with the drive belt system and uh, in recent weeks I've been watching uh, Mr. Peak's series on converting bandsaws and uh, I have uh, pretty much the same issues that he had uh, on his uh, uh, gearbox uh, conversion uh, with a small pulley without much belt contact and the belt slipping on the small pulley. Uh, so in my case I can uh, eliminate uh, a, a step belt. There's a, a double step, uh, two, two, two pulleys and uh, three pulleys and two belts. Uh, I think I can eliminate the middle pulley without too much trouble and have a much better uh, pulley uh, relationship, um, uh, two much larger pulleys. Uh, so that'll be another video. We'll get into that pretty soon. Uh, for the moment, uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with this. Uh, I, again, I need to learn, uh, I need to practice silver soldering. I've got a junk blade I can cut up and, and practice making joints on uh, and try to get that technique down. Uh, but this joint, this joint is holding solid enough to do the work and I think if I get the belt to hold and not slip, I think it'll pull that uh, questionable spot through the metal here and uh, uh, keep, keep cutting instead of stopping. So we'll take a look at that in the next video. That worked out plenty well. I'm real happy with that. I want to thank Tom at Tom's Techniques 
uh, for uh, pro providing the inspiration uh, for this project and I hope you'll comment, I hope you'll subscribe, I hope you'll come back to the shop again. Thank you for watching. In October of 2016 we took a trip with our daughter and her family uh, on the Pikes Peak Cog Railway from Manitou Springs at the bottom to the summit of Pikes Peak at the top, elevation 14,115 feet. Uh, this was a fantastic trip, uh, highly recommended, uh, but you'll have to wait a while. The, the railway is shut down until 2021 for the installation of a complete new cog system to accommodate a complete new set of trains. Uh, the new trains don't work with the old cogs, so they have to replace the whole thing as a, as a unit. Uh, and they're doing a lot of other major repair work at the same time. So check back with the Pikes Peak Cog Railway in 2021 and, and take this trip if you get a chance.